In this video, we're going to look at refactoring the dialog code that we implemented in the last video. If you remember, we had a dialog that would interact with the user and perform some kind of mathematical operation based on, based on the user input. I've got the code ready here, so I can quickly talk you through it. Um, I'll just run through the application first so you can see what it looks like in action. So the first thing it's doing is saying, do you want to add square root or square? So I'm going to say add, provide number one, provide number two, and then it gives us a result. So we can we can run either of these operators and it will take different actions depending on which, um, which operator we choose. So what I want to do is have a look at the code now. You can see we have this mass dialog. Uh, inside this mass dialog, we have a number of state transitions. So these are basically when the user um, provides input or we're expecting input from the user. Um, we transition into a different state. We wait for the user to, to respond, which is, which is fine. But when we've got a, a dialogue like this, which has a number of different responsibilities, you know, here it's got three responsibilities. It's either adding, square rooting or squaring. It can become quite difficult to maintain. So one of the techniques that you take advantage of with bot framework is dialogue composition. So you can break up this functionality into discrete dialogues and move that functionality into the, the appropriate place. So that's what we're going to look at today. We're basically going to look at splitting this dialogue into three further dialogues and those further dialogues will provide the, um, you know, the, the specific mathematical operation behavior. So I've taken a minute to refactor the dialogue code. I'm going to show you now. Hopefully, um, hopefully it'll be clear that it's um, it's a bit more maintainable, a bit, bit more. The structure of it is a bit better. So we'll start with the controller. Um, we still in the controller. We still have this mass dialogue. But if I go into the mass dialogue, you can see that we we have this one um, state transition message receive start and and that's where we're just asking the user whether they want to add or whether they want to square root or whether they want to square it, this is the main menu of the application if you if you like so we wait for a response from the user for the operation once we've received that we then create the child dialogues here so you can see we've got one dialogue for addition one for square root and one for squared so if we take the addition dialog just um, step you through it. So we've moved the code to maintain state. So we're, we're now just maintaining state for the dialogues that I need to maintain state. So addition, for example. Um, but the, the rest of the code's pretty much the same. You know, we still have the start async, which prompts you for the number. We still have this um, state transition for this particular operation. The big change is this context done call. So that's basically saying this dialogue is finished. Bot framework will, will take that dialogue off the stack of dialogues. So it'll return control to the dialogue that called it. So the, um, the main dialogue, this one here. When the um, done is called, we call this um, callback after child dialogue is done. And that's the same for each of the dialogues and all that does is kind of goes back to the beginning you know starts the process again so i'll just show you the other two dialogues the other two dialogues are a bit simpler so we've got the square root this one's asking us for one number there's no persistence in this one um, we're literally just asking for one number then calculating the result and then again we're saying context done in exactly the same way and the final one is the squared dialogue so again if i go into there Again, it's exactly the same as the previous one, and we've, we're just saying context done on there. So what I'll do is I'll set some breakpoints so you can see what's going on here. And I'll run that. If I fire up the emulator. So you can see we've received the message. This is the same as it was previously. State transition here. 
So remember, we're waiting for, for the user to type something in. So if I type in add, continue, you can see that we're creating a new dialog. We're using context call, and that's adding the dialog to the top of the stack. Okay. And we, if we go into, into here, again, I'll set a breakpoint here so you can see what's going on. So it's saying provide number number one, and that's what we're seeing in here. So number one is one, and then we're getting that message back, and then we're saying provide number two. So I'll provide number two, and then we're saying okay. So we're calculating the result of that, and then we're saying we're done with this dialog. So if we go back to mass dialog and we set a breakpoint here, we'll see that we're going back to the beginning. So again, we've seen the result and I can say hi. I'm gonna take all my breakpoints off at this point. So this time I can do square root, for example, provide one number. So you can see that the code is working exactly the same way, but the way the code is structured just makes it a bit more maintainable. So, you know, if, you, if you've if you got a, a complicated bot, which has quite a, a lot of, um, you know, sort of different conditional paths that it can go through in different states, then this is, this is kind of the best way to organize um, your code to ensure that, you know, if you need to maintain it, you're only impacting the minimum amount of code you need to. You'll also see later that this technique works very well with form flow and, and also Lewis as well, which we haven't talked about yet. But if you're using Lewis dialogues as well, that works quite well. So hopefully that was useful. Um, I'm going to upload the, um, the code to GitHub again. So, you know, if you check out the description, you'll, you'll see a link where you can have a look at the code and just compare it with the original code just to, you know, see for yourself how it improves the maintainability. Thank you for watching. As always, if you found this video interesting, please leave a like. Feedback, positive or negative, please leave it in the comments below. Thank you again and I will see you next time.